in the back. So we're um, at MS, MSP uh, Tech Day with Data, and uh, uh, I'm Jeff Ferris, President and CEO of Cloud Radio, along with Ricky Cicchini, who is our Director of Business Development. And this episode, we're going to focus on QBRs with Cloud Radio um, and why we think they're a little different, um, or should be a lot different, actually, uh, than your typical QBR process. So. I'm going to talk a little bit, and then uh, Ricky's going to take it and do a little more of a deep dive on uh, the planner and the QBR process that we have in place. So um, before we get into it, um, just want to reemphasize again what, what we're focused on in the series of webinars is really talking about Cloud Radial as an integrated single pane of glass. Lots of things that Cloud Radial does to bring account management service and clients together. Uh, so they can all work together in, in, a, in better ways. Um, and certainly there's tools there that help uh, service and account management uh, communicate more effectively, uh, that help account management and clients work more effectively in service and accounts, and then everybody work more effectively uh, when those needs are called for. And eventually what you're starting to set up here with this overlap, and, and we, we kind of touch on it, and it's, a, it's not a, it's, maybe it's not the greatest diagram, but one of the things that it, it really doesn't do justice to is the idea of bringing everybody together in, in the same frame of knowledge so the QBRs become more effective. And, and this is one of the things that is often overlooked in the QBR process is the idea that uh, everybody has the same, same data. Uh, and as we know, going into a discussion with anybody, as long as you're dealing with the same set of facts, it's easier to get going as long as perceptions are aligned correctly. In other words, service and clients uh, had the same understanding of customer satisfaction, of open tickets, of resolution time. Uh, as long as account management and service understand how the clients are being serviced, if they're aware of any pain points, and then accounts management and clients uh, are on the same page with the issues that the clients are facing, all of these these different groups can work effectively together. And when this data is different, or when services is looking at their own set of tools, clients at their own uh, out-of-date reports or account management, uh, struggling to log into six different systems to see what's going on, the QBR process is the one that's gonna suffer. And, and we have talked to hundreds and hundreds of MSPs and the number one thing that comes up over and over and over again, and I can't repeat this enough, is really the failure of the whole QBR process, primarily because everybody's working from with different tools that are ill-prepared to coordinate uh, this activity. And, and when communication is bad between account management and service or between uh, clients and service or any of these areas break down, the QBR is going to be the one that suffers. If it's hard to produce the reports, QBRs don't happen. If it's if it's difficult to show clients what you what you have, it's hard to do the the QBRs. Uh, again, QBR is is basically that pain point. If you're not having QBRs with clients, it's because you don't have a good roadmap for how these things work together, and typically it's because you're you're fragmented and, and broken with the tools that you use. So so. Now, understanding that maybe, the, the thing with the QBRs that, that comes into play with a QBR, you have to remember the mindset of the clients when you walk in that room at the QBR time. When you walk into a QBR meeting, your client three minutes before you walked in was focused on issues related to their business, whether it was a personnel issue, a sales issue, uh, a client issue, a service issue of their own right. Three minutes before you walked into that room, they were thinking about their business, not yours, not typically about uh, what's going on. So when you walk in the meeting, the, at least it, the way it's done today, the client is, is basically mentally not anywhere where you would like for them to be when you show up. They're not thinking about you or ways that they can work with you better effectively. So one of the things that's important is you work through um, this whole QBR process is not wait till the day of the meeting or even when you sit down in the meeting to dump a load of information on your clients. The best thing you can do at the, at the, in the QBR process is to inform in advance. And this is where the digital portal, having a cloud radial experience for clients becomes paramount 
because your clients can, can basically tap into this anytime they want. You can send them emails in advance to point them to things in the, in the portal that you want to talk about or want to discuss. You can send them the planner view before you get there. Basically, you don't have to wait until the day you show up to dump 500 pieces of paper on them to show them that you've been doing your job. So number one thing you can do to make for an effective QBR is to inform in advance and make sure your clients don't doubt the value that you bring to the table and don't doubt what you're, you're going to be able to do for them. When all of those things are off the table, when the status information is off the table, when all of those things are basically done away with, now we can get to a QBR that really is effective for clients. And so if you think about it from a client perspective, um, if you walk into the client and basically look here, we, we're here to help you answer, or we're here today to answer these three questions for you, Mr. Client, right? So, you know, we want to we want to find ways that we can save you money. We want to find ways to make you money. And we want to find ways that we can reduce your risk. Now you've got their attention. Now you're talking language that any business will understand and appreciate. And you can take this back to any vendor you work with today and determine real quickly whether or not you would like to have a QBR meeting with any one of your current vendors. The one that, that we like to pick on a lot is the electric company. And if an electric company called you today and said they want to talk to you uh, and have a QBR meeting with you today, the first response would be no. Right. Because, again, I don't my electricity worked. My electricity works fine. Um, maybe Ricky, if you saw in the last session, was having a little issues with his uh, uh, Internet. So maybe we want to talk about that. But the bottom line is, is that we want to. Um, it, 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 we don't necessarily want to have a QBR meeting with our electric company because it just works. What is there to talk about? And so you have to remember that for a lot of your clients, you are the electric company. Right. So your stuff just works. There was no problems. There's nothing to talk about. So, however, let's take this one step further. If the electric company shows up at your business today and says, look, we like what we want to work with you because we want to find you ways to save you money. We want to make you money. And we basically want to reduce your risk of every have an outage. Let's talk about ways that we can make sure this works really well for your business. Because, again, save money, uh, make money, reduce risk. I'll take that meeting. Because again, if I can save $100 a month on my electric bill, that would be huge, $50 a month. I mean, that would be worth taking uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes of my time to, to take that monthly savings. And so being able to form and reform the client conversation into these statements, into these questions, to basically cut through all of the, the nonsense and the technical data that we typically come pre-armed with, what we want to do in the QBR is, is use the portal, push that data out well in advance. So again, issues of retention, transparency, what we do for clients is off the table. Now we get in that QBR meeting uh, and we're ready to talk about the things that are of interest to them. Now we've got a meeting that's going to be productive and potentially yield a lot more uh, for the client um, in things that they value and understand, things that they they really will value for at the same time to generate more uh, projects or recurring opportunity for you uh, to help drive your business and maximize the value of those clients uh, that you have. So uh, with that, now uh, turn it over to Ricky so we can do a quick deep dive on QBRs. Sure thing. How's that look? Looks good. Cool. Yeah, guys. So uh, obviously, thank you, Jeff. I am kind of the product coach here. I do a lot of stuff, but one of my jobs is to showcase cloud radials kind of in a more practical sense. And QBRs, very interesting, very common. I talk to a lot of partners that they come to us to kind of figure out that part of the puzzle, because certainly it's pretty normal for a lot of MSPs to have some kind of processes in motion, but there's scalability issues. There is disparity issues, especially in bigger organizations that have account managers it's hard to wrangle the beast where a client has a certain set of solutions, another one doesn't. And how can two different account managers kind of run that in the same way? So Cloud Radial attempts to answer that in uh, in kind of one consolidated view. Now, I think even before the QBRs, I almost have to talk about the reporting aspect. We're not gonna do a deep dive into that. We actually did one just a bit ago, but I think it's worth mentioning what Jeff was saying is 
preparing that ahead of time? And what does that look like and how does that fuel the QBR? And we'll see it's very relevant. So just to cut it short, Cloud Radial has several kind of methods to uh, capture information and report on it, right? Whether it's directly from us and something like the infrastructure where we have our own agent, we're able to gather information directly from endpoints where at the very least, this is an inventory uh, and it gives them kind of information on each machine uh, in a tangible, more business-like structure, or whether it's taking this information and turning it into a higher level discussion through our policies, which take this raw data and turn it into something like this, where the client can now see and, and digest anything from like a red, amber, green mentality, where it's like, okay, we got to focus on our continuity and these are the issues affecting that. And this is potentially a, kind of a high level discussion that, that spurs an account manager to, uh, to want to fix things and to, to figure out solutions that, that remediate against these things. So Cloud Radio has this ability. It also has the ability, very popular, to bring in reports from any other source. So any other source of information that you have that maybe assists with QBRs that you use and enjoy nowadays, you do not have to cast out. And I would say don't cast it out in the first place, right? You're able to build off of that within the client portal, right? If you use Cloud Radio and you 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 buy into the premise that Cloud Radio should be your your one-stop shop for it, adding those archives building your folders to hold those reports, then taking those folders and maybe automating that process by sending your, your reports from those tools directly into the folders takes a lot of the legwork out that account managers do today. And that's that's really what a lot of people struggle with is that that paper dump of the, hey, here's my AV reports and my backup reports, because you certainly want to get the credit for the things that you do. You certainly want to show the clients that even from a compliance standpoint, you are doing the things that you said you were going to do IT is kind of difficult in that sense. It's, it's intangible. You can now surface that and use that later on, even in the QBR. So the policy is maybe a little bit more direct. That comes from us. The reports gives you an in in any way you want to. Even something like the assessments, which is a feature we rolled out not that long ago, gives you a way to run people through a set of questions and offer uh, you know insights into both potential risks, potential money saving uh, or money making ventures, and gives you kind of all of that within one portal. Now like with anything right this is the preface to the actual qbr because the qbr is the action ability off of all these things so all these things are triggers or flags that will eventually help you kind of draw some talking points so the actual qbr and cloud radial is handled down within the account area and we just went over this in, in the webinar as well over the general flow to cloud radial has a bunch of different features in there for specific purposes and qbr is, is kind of at the very bottom of all this because everything kind of builds up to it everything is a a data point or, or something that kind of helps the client further understand where they're kind of going with it from actionability. So the two spots I like to talk about when I talk about the planner, which is where we're going to run the QBR, is the dashboard, right? So the dashboard is where we can visualize a lot of that data. And we'll see how this comes into play in a moment. Maybe it doesn't make too much sense right now, but we're taking a lot of the stuff that we're pulling from our agent or maybe any other source you feel like, and we're plugging it into a way that makes sense for the client to, to view in a one-stop shop. We're not really expecting them to jump through everything if an account manager wants to run them through their uh, through their portal, or if they're curious, they're certainly welcome to. But again, getting to the point, that executive that was 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 thinking about their own business three minutes ago is not really going to have time to see everything all the time. So dashboards is a nice way to to kind of boil that down, right? So in the COVID one, this is an example of where you could plug in any data source, not just stuff that we pull right from our own systems into that discussion. So whenever you're ready for all this, I think the way I'm going to prefer to do it is I could show you the planner for the demo account, I think the easier way to show show it would be more for like a brand new account. And it looks something like this. In this thing, you can see it's, it's not rocket science and nor is it meant to be. It's meant to give kind of a synced, good springboard uh, into the conversation. So at the very least, what you're seeing here is this kind of structure across six columns, right? You've got your recommended column, you've got a one year view between it, and then you've got an installed uh, column as well. So the premise here, again, not rocket science, you've got your core services initially that you can deploy out to all of your clients or any kind of combination to your clients in Cloud Radial. And these services indicate what you can do from a, uh, you know, from a service perspective, like high level stack, right? So whether it's a laptop refresh or an entire managed security offering, you can move that over. They're all nice and color coded with names and descriptions and clicking on them will yield the results of showing what that service entails. So that means that within the context of their own portal, they always have your brochure, right? They always have the capabilities of your company directly within here. So that means they can see it at any time, right? The natural progression of this is not only just showing them what you can do, but also making it a little bit more interactive. So you can see what I've done here is I've dragged some of these across to the installed column, which basically now function as a complete, right? So the client now sees 
the available universe of services, what they are currently getting from you, what they are uh, potentially uh, able to get from you, and then maybe even a roadmap of what things to come, right? So in Q1, in this case, we're doing a, a server backup project. And this is the very bare minimum of what you can do with Cloud Radio's planner. And the QBRs certainly don't, don't get very interesting from this perspective, although sometimes it's necessary. I think the dynamicism of QBRs is heavily dependent on the person running them and what tools they have available to them. So maybe this is okay for somebody that's just starting out, that you're kind of breadboarding and road mapping out uh, what you're gonna do. But as things get more complex and more intricate, maybe this doesn't quite cut it. Maybe now that you've spent uh, no time gathering reports because you've automated a lot of those processes within the portal, like Jeff was saying, you've kind of cut out that need to dump the papers on there. They can see that information whenever. And certainly you can always go back and access the reports, the policies and all that whenever you feel like, even during the QBR. So when you're looking at the planner and you're running a QBR, you are now free to explore things that really save money, make money or reduce risk. And maybe that's not something you had pre-canned, right? Maybe that's not something that you had as far as your core stack. So you can focus even on project management and tracking. And you can see there's kind of a hint of that. Um, I don't ever really recommend this to be used as a standalone budgeting tool or project management tool because it's not really built to be so. It's built to be, again, a springboard to talk about those things. Despite that, it does a bit of both. So if you look into it, right, even in the installed stuff, you can see there's a hint of that. There has this pricing and this is other stuff. A core example of how you would run a QBR is maybe you're doing a discussion like I'm doing with you guys or I'm talking to Jeff. And now that I don't have to ask all those questions or defend my work for the past month, I can focus on the future. So I can start to go, okay, well, let's talk about it. I know you said that you're hiring 10 new people in January, so maybe that'll actually uh, be something we wanna plan for. So let's throw that on there, right? So that'll be, let's say, a decision-making thing because there's lots of logistics there. It might require uh, rejiggering the, the flow of, of, of communications, new, new, new uh, equipment, there's lots of stuff that goes into a higher thing. So I'd say that's the upper echelon. So we're gonna write that in, right? 10 new higher project. Okay, summary of the card, kind of like we're seeing in the background, that short description. So let's say planning for new hires. Cool. Now in the description, it's very free flowing. It's very casual and it's very understandable for an, even a non-technical person. I can go through this and I can start to jot down notes, right? 10 new hires in January. All right, we're gonna need Maybe we're going to need nine new desks set up. And then we're going to need, we only need uh, eight new laptops. We actually have a couple spare and so on and so forth. Even going through and adding attachments on the card. And this is really interesting, despite the simplicity of this. I mean, you see, this is not that many fields to fill out. The reason that this is cool is because all of a sudden, we are starting to add something that is not just a pitch board where you start to go, we need this service installed, which is really boring for both parties. But you're starting to do something that now, gets them visibility, gets them invested in it, because now you're showing them stuff that is related to their business that is dynamic and evolving. As things change, you might have the quotes from the vendor on the laptops, all of a sudden, boom, they can see their own status on their own things on the board alongside everything else. And this is collaborative. I mean, you could have the client add this too. If you go deeper into it, right, it's not just about even jotting down notes. If I wanna go deeper into it, I can do things like editing the card. I could have done this in the first pass, but. You can see that there is a settings option where I can start to do things like showing the price. Maybe it's estimated, right? We don't quite know, but I want to give them a ballpark number. A lot of the, these fields are, 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 you know, what you see is what you get. So it's not too crazy to go through them, but saying things like, hey, this is in progress and it's actually a high priority item. And maybe we're already 70% with, the, with the, the progress we're planning it. It's set to be completed on the 31st of December. So we're well ahead of schedule. And even pricing, right? Does it incur a monthly price or a project price? And let's just say it's going to be, you know, 10 projects for each 10 person, and it's gonna cost $500 each. So going through all this and kind of filling it out to, to your, your, your level of comfort starts to generate something that is way more interesting, right? So all of a sudden what's happening is now the card starts to take a lot of interest, right? It's not just a board where I go, yeah, cool, interesting. I start to go, no, no, this is where I can literally see like, yeah, let's shift things around. $5,000 project, it's gonna be appended because we're hiring 10 people. We're doing all these things. It starts to become something very, very useful. Now. Back to my first account, right? In my in my demo account, the reason I don't typically like to start here is because it'd be a little overwhelming, but this is an example of one I'm about to show you that is pretty far along, right? So in this planner, we have lots of things going. It's not just one thing here or there. It's starting to have things moved across. I got plenty of things that are already completed. I've got things that are moving across as far as pricing goes. I've got flexible plans. We can move things back and forth. Even uh, a common use case that happens plenty of times is sometimes a client We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll recommend a project, we'll put it up on the board, we'll kind of plan it out. And then for one reason or, or another, whether it's because they don't have the money for it, or maybe for one reason 
or another, they, they pulled the plug on it. That's also equally important. So it's not just, again, I really don't like QBRs being pitches because there really shouldn't be. Sometimes there is some aspect of it, of course, but for the most part, if something goes wrong, you also want to be able to notate that even from an accountability perspective. So another very powerful feature of Cloudera, which is all very simple is, should I be talking to Jeff and we're going through this and we have this project listed up and guess what? All of a sudden he goes, ah, we're not quite ready to do that. Maybe I want to note that, that we did our due diligence. We've list, listed all that out. So I'll just go back in and maybe I'll edit that on the fly, right? With them or without them. I'll go, okay, Jeff said no. Come back in, let's say June of 2021. That's cool. Now, in this case, it's kind of whatever. It's, it's a new hire project, so we can always waylay that. But this can be really useful for things that you may recommend a server backup project, or you may recommend uh, uh, you know, your managed security offering, because all of a sudden, based off of those reports we talked about earlier, you're not coming out of the blue and just talking about this. You're also incorporating those data points. So we, we, we talk about this a lot internally as evidence-based selling. So there's uh, a lot of different ways to approach this planner, right? So from the, the projects to the, um, you know, the, the, the core services, so now what I'm doing is I'm throwing the dynamicism of using data points to discuss things. So I'm not recommending something just because I think it's, it's so. I'm recommending that because I'm seeing that under the policies, right? We're seeing that there's problems with security or compliance or anything like that. So if I recommend something and all of a sudden it gets declined, what I might want to do is I might want to right click on it and say, move this to options. That might happen for projects, but that might also happen for core services I can offer. So a HIPAA compliance assessment, right? It's medical compliance may not be relevant for this client, despite the fact that I can offer it. So what I'm doing in both cases is I'm still focusing on the core services and still focusing on things that matter. But now at the top, I've got this little options board and things that I don't think are relevant for right now that are not considered currently are still notated. I still have my notes on the 10 new hire project or my conference room upgrade or my HIPAA stuff. And basically I've got accountability that should something go wrong, the client can't really come back to me and say, you never said anything, there's miscommunication. You go, well, it's all kind of listed in here. So very powerful from that perspective. Uh, not always pessimistic, you can always right click and bring it back. So anything from, again, having that general first discussion of where things are coming from, oops, uh, where things are coming from uh, on your side of things, where the rationale is, you can do that freehand like I just did. You can do the, the pre-canned core services. You can write things uh, you know, on the fly to existing cards, or even, I, I forgot to show this actually, but as you go through and you, you kind of notate things uh, as an account manager through that you want to discuss, one of the things that Cloud Radio is really flexible about is when you click on specific bits of data, so in this case, a policy, I can add things to the planner on the fly. So again, I can do this beforehand to try to scale my QBR process. I can make sure that I've got the same set of data coming in the same way. Let's add that to the planner, right? Let's say this is a security concern and you can see all of a sudden from somewhere that is not the planner without having to jump back and forth, I can say that should go to the planner, right? We can do that with the policy. We can do that with even the dashboards. The dashboards are a great way to do it because it's visual. So instead of having to show them 50 things on, on a list, I can go, we should talk about disk encryption. That might be a proof point to why I wanna do security. So let's add that to the planner. So there's lots of little bits where you can do this. And then as I bring it over to the planner, I go, oh, this is a security thing, let's say. Uh, I go through, I, I, I take all my notes and all of a sudden that is up here and I have that and I can add notes to it as I feel on the fly. So very, very- Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. go ahead. So, so we're getting down to the end. And one of the things that, I want to emphasize that, that Ricky uh, mentioned, the planner, think about the planner as a yes board, right? And there's one of the best sales techniques uh, you can use is to make it look like a collaborative sale. You know probably what it's gonna look like at the end. And one of the mistakes that you often see is that people, especially when they have a, a quoting tool and have the ability to crank out a lot of paper and documents, is they walk into the meeting with a big stack of paper ready to talk about those new hires and those new PCs with the quotes ready to go. And so what happens is the, the client sitting there, it's warming up in their head. And as soon as you put 30 pieces of paper in front of them with all the details, the terms and conditions, the, the warning information, all of that, now it's scary. And so, so then what happens is mentally, the client kind of shifts to the stay away mode. Like, oh, you're trying to do something to me. And one of the best sales techniques you can use that this mimics is to go in there with a blank piece of paper. 
And so, and to go as to Rick, as Ricky was saying, one of the best techniques is to go in with a blank piece of paper and write it out on the piece of paper for the client in front of the client as they talk about it. So just as Ricky did in that note, you know, we've got 10 PCs, we've got eight we can use already, we need a couple of desks, we need some phones, whatever it is. You're basically letting the client form that that image in the head of in their head of what they want without looking scary and contractual and obligated, right? And so when you can do it this way, when you can keep it simple and light, you're more likely to get the yes. Then when you get the yes, you can follow up with the with the contracts, you can follow up with the formal proposals, you know, the full scoping, assessments, all that sort of stuff. But mentally, the client has already said yes to it. And now they're expecting that next level of detail. What happens a lot of times, again, because you get so expert in what you're doing, you lead with all the detail, you scare off the client, and you forgot to keep things simple. And so the planner is designed, uh, again, it's designed to be simple. You know, there's, there's a complaint sometimes that comes up, well, it's like it's, it looks too simple. That's on purpose, right? And it's on purpose to get the yes from the client, so then you can give them the scary bits, right? Always lead with simple, make it easy to change, just like Ricky did in the, in the demo. No, we need nine PCs. No, we need 11. Okay, fine. That, that, you know what? That took me one second to make that change. See how easy it is? Do you need another one? I can make a one second change as well. Do you need 13, 14? Again, you can make this really simple for the clients because you've kept it in a simple, engaging way. And when it's time to turn on the real sophistication, the quoting systems and all that, let the client be expecting that. In fact, let them be begging you like, hey, we agreed to do that on the planner. Where's my quote so I can sign it and get this project going? That's a much better sales process than trying to lead with a big stack of documents. So 